What the frick? Is that water? The frick is that? Yeah, somebody lied somewhere. Look at those fluids. Obviously, looks like water and oil. Last video, I bought this lightly crashed CBR1000RR that was claimed to be in good running condition, but definitely wasn't. Today, we continue the story. Well, I just got off my flight from Oklahoma yesterday and I'm back home working on the CBR1000RR today. And after I finished filming last video, it dawned on me just how big of a scam this bike was. Rarely in life does it pay off to enter everything expecting the worst and always pessimistic and skeptical of everything. You know, nothing in life really is cut and dry. So I always try to enter everything as optimistic as possible with doing my research at the same time. And that's just kind of how life is. So on this one, I think I got burned pretty good, but it could be an easy fix. I don't want to say just yet that the whole bike's completely irreparable. I suspect a head gasket issue or some kind of internal issue, but it could be something small. That's what we're here to find out today. Let's get to work. All right, last video I left you guys with a fuel pump problem. It's not priming whenever I turn the key on, and this bike obviously is not getting fuel into the engine. It does crank over, albeit a little bit slowly in my opinion. It should crank a little faster, I think. But it seems like every system is go. I appreciate everybody's comments last video. I'm gonna start trying out things that you guys are saying right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get this thing on the spool stand and we'll just get straight to work, see if we can figure out why this bike is not running. As a reminder, if you don't remember, there was a lot of coolant in the engine oil. That could be a lot of different things. First and foremost, there are a couple of you guys thinking I'm stupid because the kickstand was down. Nothing. No fuel pump. Now I will say it's not a completely unfounded diagnostic by whoever commented it might be a kickstand being up or down because I and some of you guys have actually had kickstand switch problems in the past where the bike would just randomly shut off and not start until I fiddled with a kickstand switch. So thank you for the suggestion. It doesn't look like it's that though. Spray some starting fluid in there, just see if it will actually fire up and if the ignition system's actually active, but it's just not getting any fuel. That will be an easy indicator. Something didn't sound good though. I don't know what it is. I think what we just learned, the takeaway from this, is the ignition system is active, like it wants to run, not getting fuel, and something was making a really bad noise. To the degree I'm sketched out to try to even crank this thing over again. Did not sound good. Anyway, I don't wanna mess things up worse than it already is. Ryan, the guy who helped me on the McLaren project, take a look at it. He's, I already texted him and he immediately responded that he'll be down to help me out at some point when he's free. So maybe he'll roll over here, maybe he'll just fix it in 10 minutes and it's some easy thing that I don't know about. So if Ryan can't figure it out or doesn't want to figure it out, I'll see if I can find a shop to actually find, to actually diagnose the mechanical problems with this thing. Even though I could figure this stuff out, it'll save me time. In the end, it might even save me money and it will verify that the bike is safe to ride. And the engine is, you know, whatever is wrong with it is diagnosed at least. And to speed things along on this rebuild process, I'm kind of just going into it with the mindset that this bike is going to get finished up at some point, even if we have to engine swap it or whatever. It is registered and titled and everything, it just needs to run. And then this thing is fully legal to operate on the streets. So it's a good viable rebuild project. Even if the engine is completely shot, we can swap that out if we need to. So in the meantime, to help everybody and the whole process along, I'm going to start ripping all the bike apart and just getting it down to the bare components, taking off all the plastics, all the broken parts, and throwing on the new parts. So these items here were what I knew I needed to repair the bike. Got a new to me left-hand control switch here. Levers, grips, sprocket, and chain kit. I bought some OEM LED headlights in case the HIDs didn't work. Turn signals, and then a headlight stay bracket because this one is broken. But speaking of broken things on the front, the headlights are actually perfectly fine and everything else really is perfectly fine. My diagnosis on this bike, that's what I could see I needed. And so I ordered all that stuff and I did get a fairing kit for this thing and it's not the cheapest one I could buy. I bought the parts assuming that this is going to be the bike that I jump on most of the time. And so I bought the fairing kit based on what I would prefer. It is a full carbon fiber kit. Let's get every part out of the box, make sure it is the right kit. Hopefully the bike runs. Here 
here is the fairing kit, you guys. It is a carbon fiber lookalike. It's not actual carbon fiber because that's expensive. But it also is not the cheapest kit I could get. There were some for like $380 range, like really, really cheap stuff. If I remember correctly, this one was about $550. I just like the look of this a lot better than the other kind of generic eBay looking kits. Of course, carbon fiber itself would look bland, so I will be doing some like graphics and stuff on it. So right now, let me just take off all of the red fairings on this thing. Basically just strip the bike all the way down to where we would need it, where it's still functional, but we can slap all the cosmetic stuff back on whenever it's done. We're moving on to replacing the headlight stay bracket. Bolt on right here to the steering column and then it'll pop right off. And this stuff just pops right out. So let's just get that done. Brand new, very good day. Ryan said he's gonna come over here. So in the meantime, I'm just gonna get this thing completely cleaned up. He's gonna see if he can get it running, if it even does run. Who really knows? And we'll just go from there. And while I'm here, I'm actually gonna diagnose the clutch lever that has no real pull on it. I didn't realize you actually have to bleed the clutch on these bikes. You bleed it kind of just like the brake lines. There's a nipple right here. You just pull, bleed, pull, bleed. So let's get to it. Hey guys, Chris Victor, so I can Oh yeah, that's a clutch pull now. It's getting hard. It's getting real hard. I think I overfilled the oil just a little bit, so I'm gonna drain a little bit out. All right, and with the oil a little bit more leveled off, this wheel is at a whopping zero PSI. Another update, since we tried to fire this up last, since we've been working on this thing, it's starting to solve its own issues. I replaced the headlight stay bracket. All of a sudden the screen, the dash unit, doesn't buzz anymore. It doesn't have that super high pitch buzzing noise. It just turns right on like a normal bike. Let's see if the clutch actually works. So I'll put it in first. And then if I pull the clutch, no. No, okay, well. If I put it in first with a kickstand down, what would happen if I tried to start it? Nothing, no crank. What if I pull the clutch in? Nothing, no crank. But with the kickstand up, clutch pulled in, let's see what it does. Nothing, no crank. Back in neutral, crank's just fine. Interesting. Something's a little off. Something is definitely a little off. So hopefully Ryan gets here soon and then he can probably tell me what it is. But besides that, pretty much everything structurally, at least the headlight stay bracket is all replaced. Everything's back where it needs to be. I just need to swap out some of the controls, a lever, a couple other miscellaneous things here and there. And then hopefully when we get this thing running, it'll be fully operational and looking really good. Let's hope that's the case and not spending another $2,000 on an engine and a full engine swap. So listen to this engine when you crank it over. So. It's supposed to be like a linear, like a linear sound. I know what a motorcycle is supposed to sound right. like, and it sounds like you it's kind of forced. Yeah. That part right there is kind of concerning me. Yeah. You hear that? Yeah. And this was broken, I and mean, it could have been that a chip of metal or something flew into the engine when it. Right. You know. Possibly. We're gonna have to check voltages to the fuel pump and all that stuff. You charge me fifty bucks for this, right? How about five fifty? <laughs> five fifty. <laughs> 
It was pretty cool watching Ryan start digging into the problems with his bike. He has been working on cars and bikes for 15 years, and it was incredible just watching how quickly he got down to the heart of the problems on this mystery bike. A lot of the problems seemed super vague, but he just poked around in the bike and was able to pinpoint them really quickly. Words really don't do it justice here how grateful I am he was able to swing by and help me figure this out. I learned a lot just watching, and I think that's really cool. So I'll put a link to his channel in the description. He wants to definitely start posting a little, a little bit more side. content on his channel. He has a lot of cool stuff going on, but he just needs to get some of that content out. So if you guys can go show him some love for all the help he's given me on this and the McLaren earlier this year, that would be awesome. He's a really good guy. Okay, so what that tells us right now is we have ignition pulse and we have spark. All that's working. The cam timing's not screwed up. None of that stuff is messed up. Good. I didn't really hear anything crazy right now. So Good. we get some fuel going to this thing and it might just fire up and run okay. And let's cross our fingers once we do get it to start here in a minute that it passes the hydrocarbon. So we're going to put a hydrocarbon test on it, make sure that the fluid doesn't change colors. And then okay. if it doesn't change colors, your head gasket is probably good. And it's probably that oil cooler. But now we know fuel. That's our yeah. culprit. That's what we've got to figure out how to get it to run. So what this slide's going to tell us is if the uh, fuel system is being activated properly. So when I turn this on and crank it over, if that flashes, then we can move on to checking the fuel pump. Oh. No, no fire. So now we're going to have to go backwards in this system. Some people in the comments were saying that the key had a, I don't think it was, that's what it would be though, is the little like chip in it that mm -hmm. wouldn't allow it to fire up if it, I wouldn't expect it was that though. I just don't know what it would be to. No, this use. is the key that it had when it was wrecked, right? Right, that's what I would think. Bank angle sensor, I wanna say? Yes, this right here. Yeah. Right. Um, actually, you are correct. It's actually probably disconnected right now and it's probably not upright. Here's the bank angle sensor. And I think this side goes up. But yeah, that, that metallic noise that I heard right there. I was I'm just going to ask you about that. Yeah. I'm not too scared about that. Okay, good. To me, that sounds like spark knock or detonation. Okay. Right. Yeah, I got so, you. So, yep. Um, Let's get it started and then worry about it if it continues it after good. running for a few minutes. Okay, so now we know that this angle sensor does not affect the spark system. Now look at that, the fuel pump is getting power. The tank he bought was obviously a very cheap one on eBay and it had no cap on it the entire time it was sitting. Yeah. Chances are it just rusted up inside there. All right, I'm gonna uh, try the fuel pump right now. It might spray fuel. I'm gonna roll on it. Yeah. <laughs> ceased yeah i felt like i heard it kind of it tried flick. to yeah trying to like spin it forwards and backwards mm -hmm. just in hopes it breaks free even though you're yep. not supposed to do that <laughs> i do have a hammer if we need to do it the old school way hey you know what pull Let's it out and it smack try. it real hard right here somewhere okay. just keep this fuel pump is shot After officially verifying the fuel pump was seized up, Ryan went ahead and started looking into other smaller electrical problems. A lot of the power wires were only getting signal intermittently, and Ryan was able to figure out that that was all because of a faulty start-stop switch. Very good to know. So I went ahead and placed an order for a new start-stop switch and a new fuel pump and a couple other miscellaneous things I'll need, and they should all get here next week sometime. Hey, what's going on? I'm looking for a fuel pump for an 06 CBR 1000. So I found the fuel pump. However, for that bike in particular, there are two options. Okay. Um, uh, I can give you the prices for both of them because so the phone number is identical up until the last three. There's going to be a difference in the letter. So it'd be a D21 as the first part number at the end, and then it'd be an L21. The only way for me to figure out which one would go to your bike, unless you already know, um, I'd have to call um, Honda, contact them with the VIN number, and they can then directly tell me which fuel pump would work for you. I see. Um, Do you have them in stock too, both of those? No, we have to order both. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, what are the prices for them? The D21 part number would be 615.75 and the L21 part number would be 588.54. Would that be installed or would that just be for the part? That's just for the part. For installation, I'd have to direct you to service. I see. Um,
Oh yeah, look at that. I'm assuming definitely these had are... been sitting for a while. Yeah, there's quite the amount of rust in the tank, that's for sure. You know, it almost seems like wherever oh, this geez. bike was. Look at this, dude. What? Look at this. Oh wow. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. Here's a it seems like somebody, there's so many little cuts on all the wires around here that somebody was looking for something. Everything is all rusted up. Hey, you know what? We might be able to just take this out. That looks like every automotive pump I've ever seen. Yep. <laughs> the eBay, eBay, they sell this exact specific thing for like 25 yeah. bucks. So they were That's saying hilarious. direct swap fuel pump for a CVR. Yeah, I just have to unscrew a few things and it probably would pop right out. Just that fuel pressure regulator, we want to make sure that that's not ruptured. We can't really do much until we get that fuel pump. Yep. Then from there, we can figure it out from there. But I can start it and let it run for a good bit of time if okay. you want to hear it run. I just need I'm to down. We'll do a hydrocarbon test and that'll for sure okay. tell us if that motor is good or not. Sweet. Very good. No freaking way, dude. <laughs> no freaking way. Holy crap. I can almost not believe it right now. That's insane. <laughs> it actually runs. Wow. Insane. All right, so now we got to introduce coolant or water into the yep. system real quick. If it runs that good after and it passes hydrocarbon, then I'll say, all right, spend the money to fix it. The motor sure. probably stops. Once I get it started and running for a little bit, this is going to drain and go into the block. So we want to make sure that we get it all the way full to the top to get it accurate. Okay. Sample. Like so it's going to go in blue and while it's running and we're pumping it, if it turns a different color than blue, yellow, then uh, it's got a blonde gasket. So. Okay. Let's hope and pray. Yep. <laughs> Try giving it a little bit of uh, gas. A little more. Good. Still looking blue. Oh yeah, Dude. the stuff. Uh Changes color dramatically. Okay, look at that. Right, so check well, this good. out. So now that this is done right here, I can show you. Right, it's still blue. Watch what happens when it comes in contact with the exhaust. Can you see the difference it's already starting to make? Oh, absolutely. Heck yeah, dude. Okay. That's so we what know. I'm talking about. We know there's no blown head gasket now. That's what I'm talking about, so, dude. That's crazy, dude. I can't believe that there's actually like no serious mechanical issues with this thing right now, right. at least that we can verify. That's crazy. No, that motor sounds really good. Uh, I didn't hear anything crazy going on with it. Yeah. So Sweet. however that coolant got there, or it's not it's internal. nothing catastrophic. Yeah, it yeah. could be that cooler. It could be, for whatever reason, there's rust on top of the valves. Oh yeah, there you go. You can see it down there for sure. Obviously it runs still, so yeah. it'll clean itself off probably. It looks like it's already starting to clean itself off. Guess we can all say thank you. Everyone say thank you in the comments. Thank <laughs> you, Ryan. Huge help. Just, I would have never figured it out that fast. I guess that's the difference between a pro and then me. There was a lot of rust in the gas tank as well. So I'll order one of these fuel pumps. When that comes in, we can actually officially get this thing running, running on its own, hopefully. I can't believe this bike is actually a runner.
So the story of the crash CBR continues in the next video when the new fuel pump and the kill switch arrives. I'm very happy it's looking a lot more optimistic now after such a sketchy start to the project. And hopefully within a week or two, this bike will be ripping the streets once again, showing off the pinnacle of motorcycle engineering in 2006. However, while we wait for the parts to arrive, there's something big I have to take care of right now. So to wrap this video up, it's kind of a weird situation I'm in. I have to go repossess the McLaren now from the paint guy. Dude's pissed and he wants me to take the car. We're gonna head over to the paint shop right now and that's the next video you guys are gonna be seeing. I'm gonna go repossess the McLaren from the paint guy who's a month late on all his work and now pissed off that it's still there. So <laughs> I'll see you guys in that video. I'm gonna roll out right now.